And John Sawat would occasionally comment on the paradoxical nature of the mind and concentration. On the one hand, it's very tender, very sensitive. And on the other, it's tough and resilient. The image that comes to mind is a turtle. A turtle's body is very, very, very weak and gentle. So it needs a hard shell. As meditators, we have to get very sensitive to the mind, the breath, how we feel the body from within, so we can understand what's going on in the mind. Because some very subtle things are happening that can lead to major results. And if we're not sensitive, we don't sense them. But on the other hand, we live in a rough and tumble world. And the people out there would be all too happy just to kill, to get what they want. It's a world of a lot of turmoil. So we have to protect ourselves from that so that we're not damaged by it. And one way to do that is, is to develop all four of the Brahma-viharas. The first three are the sensitive ones. May all beings be happy. May those who are suffering be free from the suffering. May those who are happy not be deprived of their happiness. There's a certain tenderness to all beings there. But then there's the principle of equanimity. All beings are the owners of their actions. These are the basic facts. You have to learn how to be okay with the basic facts, knowing when to apply equanimity, when to apply thoughts of goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy. The first three are there to motivate your actions, thought, word, and deed. The last there is to remind you this is the way the world is. So on the one hand, you do want to be careful in your actions, but you also have to realize there are a lot of things out there that you can't change because of either your own past actions or other people's actions, past or present. And so you can't go looking for your happiness out there. This leads to the second realization. This is more in line with the Four Noble Truths. The Buddha says we suffer because we feed. The word for clinging, upadana, can also mean to take sustenance, to feed. And for most of us, this is our relationship to the world. We're trying to feed on what the world has to offer, hoping to find something good. Sometimes getting what we want, sometimes not getting what we want. But that's our basic relationship. When the Buddha said, all beings are sustained by food. He's basically saying, this is what defines us as beings, that we're feeding on things outside. So we want to change that relationship in two ways. One is to find things inside that we can feed on. And two is to make our relationship with the world one in which we're giving. You notice this is how the Buddhist teachings start when he gives his graduated discourse, the basic steps that get you ready for the Four Noble Truths. Starts with generosity, starts with giving, goes up to virtue. Virtue, too, is a form of giving. As the Buddha says, you give safety to others. When you develop the Brahma Viharas in your search for merit, again, you're radiating, you're not taking in. And ultimately, of course, when you get into the meditation, and your mind gets still enough so you can gain some insight. The insight is largely a matter of letting go. So instead of taking in, you give. And by the fact that you're giving means you're not subject so much to the things outside. It's like going to a place where you know the food is bad, but that doesn't bother you because you've got plenty of food inside, and you're not thinking of eating at all. You're thinking of handing out food. 
If you can think in those ways, then you can live in the world and not be so oppressed by the world. But you do need that source of something inside that you can then give out. This is why we meditate. I mean, you can think about the goodness, the happiness that comes from being able to give and being virtuous. And that can sustain you for a while. But it's a lot easier to sustain yourself if you've got the concentration. After all, concentration is the food of the path. And as you're used to radiating energy out, you find that as you get more and more sensitive to the breath and the breath energy throughout the body, you have a clear sense of the oneness of the energy throughout the body. You're developing what the Buddha calls mindfulness immersed in the body, where your awareness fills the body. And you become more impervious to outside influences, especially energies coming from outside. As your energy in the body is full. The image the Buddha gives is of the difference between throwing a piece of rock into a lump of clay. The rock goes into the clay very easily. That's the image for an untrained mind. As for the mindfulness immersed in the body, the image is of a hardwood door, and you throw a ball of string at it. It's not going to make a dent. That's the quality of energy you want to have. You can be in the world, and the world can't make a dent on your sense of energy filling the body. When you have the right attitude, you're here, you're here not to take, you're here not to feed on the world, because you've got food inside. You're here to give. You're here to give out. Because after all, we're going in the direction of not being a being anymore. That doesn't mean annihilation. It just means we're not taking on this identity of somebody who has to feed. So we practice that in thinking of changing the, the direction around so good things are coming out of us. And the more good things can come out of us, the stronger we'll be. Even as we're sensitive inside, the energy we give to the world is a strong energy. So this is your shell. which enables you to live in this world and yet still develop a sensitivity inside. That allows you to understand your mind, to get over your delusions, and not be subject to your greed, aversion, and all the other unskillful mental states there are. And yet at the same time not be harmed by the world.